Hey everybody, Danny Mond here. Thanks for joining us in this week's golf video. I want to focus on golfers that don't have a body like a PGA professional. Maybe you're a you know, senior golfer that lacks a little bit of flexibility, or you've got some injuries that are affecting your ability to make a fuller backswing and therefore generate some power. But you still want to hit the ball further. You still want to kind of improve your ball strike, and you still want to drop your scores. What things can you do? Well, look, I coach senior golfers every single day. I find it an absolute privilege to do so. And I wanna share with you some of the things that I've been working on with these golfers because we make some adaptations to their swing that make significant changes to their distance and their ball striking. And they're for enjoyment. I love putting smiles on their faces and I hope today I can put a smile on your face too. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's been your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, I always put a free practice plan in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. Okay, great, so let's start with your driver first. If we've got time, we'll even cover your irons because there is a slight difference between the two and the way you hit them. So, you struggle with flexibility, maybe you struggle to make that turn, you struggle to generate power, what is potentially lacking and how can we access as much as we possibly can from you on this. So let's start with first stage, what needs to happen impact, then what we'll do is we'll then show you how you can change your, your movement pattern to be able to achieve that. And third and final thing was just one kind of the secret sauce at the end, we'll cover that. So first things first, You've got to make sure at impact that that club, right, scientifically proven, needs to be heading up. The club needs to be striking the ball on an ascending blow. It needs to be hitting up on that golf ball, yeah? So the low point, if you look at this here, look, the club always has a low point. We need to catch the ball on the way up this way. We do not want to be catching it on the way down. You do that, you will lose your distance immediately, okay? Now, in order to make that happen efficiently, the club also needs to be swinging on an arc. That means that the swing direction, i.e. the direction this club is swinging as it approaches the golf ball needs to be to, for right-handers, to the right of target. I'm gonna use this as a visual tool here. Have a look at this here. So, I get myself set up here. We've got, this is just a ball tray from the driving range. It's got an arc on this, yeah? So actually, you can actually use this as a wonderful visual tool, by the way, uh, when you're practicing. So we're gonna make a swing. And we're moving the swing direction. Look, the swing direction is heading where? To the right-hand side. But look, does that mean the club's, I'm gonna hit it over there? No, because as we get towards impact, the club naturally starts to square up through the impact area here. That's what we're after. If by any chance you try to get the club going straight down, i.e. towards your target, this is what's gonna happen. Very typical. Straight down, straight into the ground. Doesn't even pick up my low point, but the swing direction, minus 6.1. If, if it, Trackman would have picked that up, that would have been a very downward strike. Low point, straight after the golf ball. Barely any height. Sometimes with that, by the way, when you do it, you might even hit some skies where the balls come off the top of your club. So that is when you're swinging too direct towards your target. We need to get the swing direction heading out this way to allow the club to swing around and up on that golf ball, okay? Very, very important. So, how can you go about achieving this? So, I may as well leave this tool here, because I think it's a great visual tool which you, can, which you can use. So somehow we need to get this arc, don't we? We need to get the club round here, but my recent student, 90 plus years old, said, Danny, I can't get around that. I just can't physically turn that way. And I said, um, you may not be able to turn all the way back here, but Chris, you can move a lot more freely, right? Because right now, what Chris was doing, he was doing this, picking it up, coming straight down on the golf ball. So here's what we did. Got Chris to just unlock certain elements of his body. So if you are trying to get a bigger turn, or you've been trying to get more distance, a lot of time, you're trying to turn like this, around and around, and it's a real stretch. But you don't do it here, right? Allow the feet and the heels to move a little bit. So imagine now, if you do this with me, walk with me, backwards and forwards. Allow the heels to come up. When you do this, look what's happening now. What happened to my hip as I do this? Just naturally. It's opening. If you struggle to get your hips open on the way through, watch this. It's opened. Yeah, it's opening easily. But when you're trying to 
flat footed to try to turn back and turn through. It's not possible to do any of this. So you've got to get this sensation of how the body moves. So we start off really basic. That's all I did with Chris. Just feel the heels moving up and down, yeah? But this isn't golfing yet because we need to add some rotation to this. So all I did now is this. I got him actually without a club to throw his arms across. Like you're almost skiing or yeah? Just swinging, swing those arms. And as you're doing this, look at my heels. They're coming off the ground, but look at them pivot here. What's this helped me do? It's helped me get some more rotation, store more energy in my backswing, but it's helped me get my hands and the club more behind me. That, so that, what can I do now? I can attack more on this path, which we talked about is the secret to hitting up and hitting the ball far, yeah? So we get this motion backwards and forwards. You don't walk like this, flat-footed, yeah? This is how people are swing, playing golf at the moment. They're swinging, they try to swing, like this. And then when they're trying to go through, they wonder why the hips can't move and they're trying to turn through the shot and they just can't do it because everything is flat-footed. So we need to unlock some of this motion so you can easily protect your body, store power, yeah? So what we did with Chris, we started really slowly. So don't worry about the follow-through yet. Just let that happen for a second. Just see if you can explore a motion where you really kind of let this heel come off the ground. And it's not easy to start with, it kind of feels weird, yeah? So just swing backwards and forwards. If you can get both heels working, like a walking fashion here, swing this way. Swing, 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 look at this. Just letting the club swing freely and allowing my heels to come up here, look, and through. White walking, one, two, they're unlocking this hip here. Unlocking this hip here, providing all this space, look to swing into, yeah? The other thing I did with Chris is I needed to get him sensing this direction too, because instinctively we all sometimes want to hit towards our target. So what tends to happen when you start to move this is you get to the top here and you go, I need to hit it straight. And that shifts your club path down this line. So I'm gonna put this back for a second so you can see this, just as a visual cue. This is why if you head to range, these are really, really useful just as visual cues. So. When you get here, you've got this freedom of motion. You could hit some shots just like that. So let's just see what happens. Let's do that now. One, two, barely any, just tapping it down there, okay? Have a look at that there. So we've, we've got 11.2 swing direction to the right. That means it's to the right of target. My 5.8B means 5.8 inches behind the golf ball. That means my low point is behind the golf ball, brilliant. So that is gonna, that's one of the secrets without any effort at all, at all, just gaining distance, yeah? So you've got to get that sensation. But some, what Krista was doing is he was really getting this, yeah? But what he did instinctively, and you might be the same, is as you get here and you want to do what? You want to hit it straight. So you get here and you want to now hit it this way, straight to the target. That shifts the swing direction too straight, and if anything, this way. So now suddenly what's happening, look at the difference now. We have a low point that is after the golf ball, this down on it. We have a swing direction that's left of the golf ball here. That is creating a huge loss of distance, yeah? So once you've got the idea of the rotation, that lovely pivot, that sensation, whoosh, start to see if you can sense the feeling of Oh, the swing direction's going on this line. Use, guys, maybe get some foot spray, spray a line, an arc. So when you've created this, make sure that when you do walk this way, you're walking the club out along that line there. Yeah, and look, if you keep walking it, look at this, your hips open, just like you would do if you were walking. One, two, so I'm gonna really exaggerate this now. Backwards here, through, watch this start to bend now because I've, Look at that motion, I've really exaggerated it. I've done this, it's hugely. 18 out to the right, 5.2 behind, and I've really kind of exaggerated just for you so you can see this, yeah? But we need to unlock your storing of energy, your rotation, but do it in a way that protects your body. Allowing this to happen will really, really do that, all right? So, we'll go into irons in just a second. Just one more thing just to cover here. Okay, we drive before we before we move on. So we've got this out, visualize this arc here, put it down on the driving range, get that sensation of what you're doing. Just bear in mind this, 
You've not only are you swinging the club on this line, always remember, I repeat this many times in my videos, allow the club to fall as you're doing it so you, your body, is opposing the force of this club. What do I mean by that? Well, the force of the club is going towards the ball, yes? Don't go with that force. If you go with it, watch this, if you get here, right, and you, th you throw the club and your body at the ball, where's that swing direction? Yes, coming straight down again. It's not, look, look at this. If I let the club fall now, and I oppose it, I go away from the club, I'm allowing the club to swing naturally on that direction here. You never have to worry about it going right because look, the club face will naturally square up if you let it, yeah? But you're opposing this force. Throw the club, don't go with the force, throw it down and oppose it, yeah? So how does this differ with irons? Not a lot, but let me grab an eight iron, just change this up on track, man. Oh, it was already on eight iron there, never mind. I would have changed it. Okay, so let's grab eight iron. So the difference with eight iron is this. With an, would you, driver, you want to hit up on the ball. With an iron, you want to hit down. So we want the club now working more up, but we don't want to do what Chris was starting to do, which is lifting the club up and doing this, because there's no power. Yes, you can strike it sometimes okay, because you're coming down on it, but there's no real speed to that. So we want to create some rotational motion, but we don't want to be maybe as low, right, we, as, uh, as we were a minute with driver. We just want to, when we come up now, just imagine you're swinging up a little bit higher here. So we're kind of matching, look, the angles of the shaft. Look at the driver. So there's the driver shaft. This is the iron shaft, yeah? So we're going to imagine swinging here with driver. And with the iron, we're going to imagine swinging up a little bit here, yeah? So, but we don't want to do that just with our arms. You want to get the pivot going, yeah? Backwards and forwards. Let's have a look at this in action. So again, one, two. Let's have a look at this. So up here, down, let's have a look at this in action, and straight where you have a 3.9 after the golf ball. Swing direction now is almost neutral. I actually find that when I'm striking my best with my irons, this is an eight iron, I will start to get that maybe a minus number. Why? Because it's much, much more on, but you'll notice the swing direction with the irons is much, much more neutral. Why? Because we don't want to be hitting up on a golf ball. 3.9 inches after the golf ball is where we want to be, all right? So if you're a senior golfer and you struggle with flexibility or any, if you've got any injuries and you want to start to unlock some power, you need some more rotation. You need to get these impact factors. We need to be in, up on the driver. We need to get in the swing direction, heading out to the right-hand side for right-handers, okay? How do you do this? Unlock your rotation, yeah? Start with just a simple walk, heels off the ground. Then add the pivot to this. Then if you really start to fence, you want to hit a bit further, throw those arms. Feel what you're having to do to throw them. Work around whatever you need to do, yeah? Then gradually add that in to the motion here. Bang, bang. But it'll take the stress off your body because you aren't winding up against this stability here, right? Please don't do that. I hope this really, really helps. It certainly helped Chris. Thanks so much. Look, I see it as an absolute privilege. You're a senior golf I see it as an absolute privilege to coach people just like you. I find it's a wonderful challenge trying to come up with different ways to do it. Um, I really, really do. Absolutely love it. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, if you use your channel, come and join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And I've put a free downloadable practice guide in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing.